Hello, I'm Frank Kaufman, president of the Settlement Project. I am offering my final thoughts on the impeachment of President Trump, which ended yesterday with an acquittal in the Senate, votes 55 to 43, with seven Republicans voting to convict. 50, although a majority voted to convict, the necessary number of votes is two-thirds of the Senate, 67 votes. The Democrats fell 12 votes short, and President Trump was acquitted for the second time. This means that the Democrats have failed twice to impeach the President of the United States. Both impeachment trials were completely unfounded. They were a demonstration of rank and hysterical political partisanship. They are acts of pure vengeance and vendettas and personal smallness from people like Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler. There has never been, there has been the possibility of impeaching President Trump, but there's never been and that's only, that's only because there's a possibility of pure falsehood and evil prevailing. But if there were ever uh, the certitude that justice could prevail, then there would never be the possibility of having successfully impeached President Trump. And evidence has it that, indeed, the Democrats have failed uh, miserably twice, uh, a very embarrassing record, and because of the left lean of media and tech, none of the people who wasted taxpayers' money will be called out on involving themselves at our expense in frivolous activity for political gain. So the first thing I want to say is congratulations uh, Ms. Pelosi, congratulations, Mr. Raskin, congratulations, Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, Chuck Schumer, congratulations for having publicly failed yet again involved in rank partisan political attack instead of doing the nation's business. The efforts to impeach President Trump are not limited only to the two failed attempts uh, the efforts to the intention and desire to impeach President Trump started uh, 19 minutes after his inauguration. 19 minutes after his inauguration, in which Ms. Claritza Jimenez wrote in the Washington Post, published 1219. That means she had to have written her article uh, prior to that morning. And the title of the Washington Post headline at 1219, 19 minutes after the swearing in of the president, the campaign to impeach President Trump has begun. So this has been going on to, from 19 minutes after the inauguration and remarkably, remarkably has gone on long after the president has left office. So their desire to impeach the president has persisted past the time when it's even possible to impeach them. The record, in fact, is, as revealed by the findings of the Mueller investigation, that Obama, uh, President Obama and Vice President Biden abused the powers of government to illegally spy on the Trump campaign. Uh, so even before President Trump, even, even there was an election to consider him, already the full powers of the United States government were being exploited in illegal activity to destroy President Trump. Before the election, the United States government had begun its efforts to destroy President Trump. And fantastically, that same group of people, and curiously enough, here sits uh, Mr. Biden in the president's seat, long after President Trump has left office, they continue to use the full force of the United States government to still 
to try to destroy President Trump. The U.S. government tries to destroy a citizen, a private citizen, using government institutions, using intelligence agencies, uh, even the head of the FBI, the head of the FBI, to destroy a private citizen in the uh, campaign arena. And after President Trump peacefully left office, thanked America for his support, <laughs> Uh, apart from the people, uh, didn't get any so hardly, and left office, went home, went home, went to his house. But those same people who tried to destroy him as a private citizen uh, somehow remain determined to try to destroy him as a private citizen, both before he ran and after he left office. Okay, you can make of that what you will. Trump supporters came out in the middle of a pandemic by the tens of millions, to vote in the largest number of people ever in the history of the United States for an incumbent president, despite 24-hour-a-day attack on the president for four straight years, under such conditions in which not a single positive report on the president ever occurred on the mainstream airways for four straight years, 75 million Americans braved the threat of death, so, so we're led to believe through COVID, to come out and vote for the president of the United States, bringing him the greatest number of people voting for an incumbent president in the history of the United States. During the time of his campaign, we saw the person who's in the president's seat right now, Mr. Biden, uh, we saw him a handful of times speaking to five people, 10 people, and somehow won the election so it's said. And so we live from the time, uh, from 10 p.m. on November 3rd, Trump supporters, these 75 million people, and who knows how many more, quite honestly, have had absolutely nothing but bad news from 10 p.m. the night of the election. First of all, at 10 p.m. the night of the election, miraculously, key swing states all stopped counting. That was bad news since Trump was winning by huge margins in these six swing areas that were basically securing for him a landslide. Lo and behold, miraculously, they all stopped counting. That's bad news. We would uh, Trump supporters would have enjoyed to hear the reading of the results that night. The Time article explains how hard a certain cabal of uh, meddlers and uh, and people taking the U.S. government affairs into their own hands, worked to make sure that the count would not happen or be declared that night. And uh, so that was bad news. Then went to sleep and woke up to find that in every single one of these places where Trump, uh, President Trump was leading by thousands or tens of thousands of votes, we woke up to find out that in 100% of these places, somehow as we slept, Trump had now slipped to losing by a couple of thousand votes in every single place. That's interesting enough. For a Trump voter, that would be called bad news. So really, from 10 p.m. on November 3rd, Trump supporters have had nothing but bad news. From there, Trump, uh, President Trump began to start to try to challenge the election results in courts, and um, no court would hear the evidence. Uh, that's bad news. There seemed to be a lot of it. A, a tremendous amount of it, thousands of sworn affidavits of people who witnessed election uh, fraud and violations of, due, of uh, proper procedure in uh, ballot areas, mailmen who witnessed their trucks full of uh, hundreds of thousands of ballots vanishing, vanishing uh, under sworn affidavits, sworn uh, under penalty of perjury. So there seemed to be, and there is, of course, uh, massive amounts of evidence of election meddling and election fraud. In fact, the Time magazine of these people bragging of their interference with the American election details exactly how they imagine themselves as savior. They, quote unquote, saved the election. So the fact that no court, including the Supreme Court, would hear evidence, that was bad news for Trump supporters. And on and on. So yesterday's news that Trump was acquitted for a second time, meaning the Democrats have perpetrated failed impeachment efforts without cease, have, have tried for 
uh, hundreds of days on end, over a thousand days on end, to impeach the president and fail again and again and again. That was that was good news for Trump supporters. So yesterday was a time of excitement and happiness and rejoicing for Trump supporters. But the reason why I've come on today, even though I just spoke a day ago on the impeachment, is to offer final thoughts and to ask the to kind of put a couple of things into perspective. Although Trump supporters are starved for some semblance of good news, and the, this acquittal really is good news, what, what, should be, what should also be noticed at the same time as the great relief that this acquittal didn't go through is that the majority of the Senate, the majority of the Senate, voted to convict as guilty the President of the United States on this single article of impeachment, inciting an insurrection. 55 of the senior most powerful people on earth, the United States Senate, 55 of them voted to believe, believe that it was a sound vote that President Donald Trump incited an insurrection of the United States of America. Uh, one of them, who voted not to, not to convict, Senator McConnell, after the vote was finished, stood on the Senate floor and delivered a breathless indictment of the president as as guilty as anyone could possibly be he he described him as perhaps the most evil person who ever walked the streets in the United States of America and said i couldn't the only reason i couldn't convict him is because the constitution doesn't allow a trial of a person who's not sitting in office can't allow a private citizen but He's as guilty as guilty could be. He's the worst guy that ever walked. Well, he just he he is guilty of of the impeachment of inciting an insurrection. So that's fifty five people that said he did. Forty three people said he didn't. And the one of them who said he didn't, even he is really would make the count fifty six to forty two. So I I would like to temper the rejoicing of Trump supporters in order to bring us into a sober moment and just take a look at what happened. First of all, the charge against President Trump is just two things. It's incitement. Incitement is a term of art. It's a legal term of an insurrection. An, an insurrection is a term of art. It's a legal term. This is what incitement is legally. I'll read. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution by default protects almost every bit of speech that we can engage in. Already, That is already woefully under attack by Facebook, Twitter, Dorsey, all of media, all university boards, corporate boards. Uh, you can't even think, let alone speak, in America right now without getting canceled. But back to my reading. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution by default protects almost every bit of speech that we can engage in. This is, this is a right which is under severe attack. But there are few areas where speech crosses the line into something that is considered violent or criminal. One of those areas is incitement. Okay? So the crime that President Trump is what the, in the impeachment article was that he crossed the line from what free speech guarantee in the United States Constitution, he crossed the line into something that is violent or criminal, incitement. So he's accused of being guilty of that crime. And I'll read on. Incitement to violence is a, is a term that refers to speech that creates an immediate risk of harm to another person. It is like a threat, except it's done through another person, which is to say, rather than threaten you directly, 
with harm, I suggest to another person, why don't you hurt her? Under the First Amendment, it is an extremely, and here's an important sentence here, under the First Amendment, it is an extremely high bar before speech can be criminalized as incitement. It's an extremely high bar before speech can be criminalized as incitement. But unless and until there is an immediate serious risk to a specific identifiable person, that speech can't be made criminal consistent with our First Amendment. This is, this is what President Trump was, was voted on, convicted down the party line in the, in the House, sent to the Senate, and out of and out of the out of the whole Senate, more than half of them, more than half of them, found him guilty of this crime, of which the, of which the legal account of it describes an enormously high bar that requires a threat, an immediate risk to an, a specific identifiable person. Okay, that's incitement. The problem, the, what, I, what I'm doing and why I'm speaking here now is for even though Trump supporters are rejoicing and happy that justice has prevailed, still you, we Americans have at least 56 people representing us who believe that President Trump is guilty of this crime. And if anybody watched the impeachment proceedings, it was... It was the most tortured effort to try to tie him to any of his speaking that could possibly remotely fall within the category of this high bar. They doctored evidence, manipulated evidence, they, they, uh, they clipped things, they took him out of context. They spent days, they spent days falsifying uh, false lying, falsifying evidence, and still, even still, they couldn't. They were bringing up old lies, deep lies, about him somehow, somehow egging on white supremacists back in four years ago or three years ago or something like that. In which, when we watched the entire clip, he said the exact opposite. But anybody who watches mainstream media has never seen him condemn. Nazis, white supremacists, again and again and again, that you're being governed right now by 56 people who believe that he is guilty of having uh, of incitement is something that should make us extremely concerned. Now the next thing is even the next thing is even more, in my opinion, absurd. I don't want to paint. Uh, exaggerated adjectives on things. What he is supposed to have incited, and this is the, this is the House uh, conviction, is on, on one article impeachment, one article impeachment, inciting an insurrection. Okay, here's what an insurrection is. Ready for this? I'm going to read again. An insurrection is different from riots and offenses connected with mob violence. An insurrection is in an insurrection, there is an, or listen to this, an organized and armed uprising against authority or operations of the government, whereas riots and offenses connected with mob violence are simply unlawful acts in disturbance of the peace, which do not threaten the stability of the government or the existence of a political party. The following case, the following is case law, case law defining an insurrection. Insurrection means a violent uprising by a group or movement acting with the specific purpose of overthrowing the constituted government and seizing its power. Did anybody watch what happened on January 6th? A few hundred people, almost all of them peaceful. We have no idea how many of them were Trump supporters, and we have no idea how many of them committed even one single act of violence. There was one known act of violence. A police officer shot a woman at point black range in the neck, an unarmed citizen. That is the only known act of violence. 
the the claims and the exaggerations and the hysteria in which people died. There's tons of controversy around the deaths, particularly of the police officer, who was perfectly fine in tweeting after his supposed being killed by armed insurrectionists in the uh, in the U.S. Capitol. There's no there's there's no record, even of who was who was armed, at all, and there's no record other than the explicit known agitation of Antifa leaders who who uh, were being interviewed as heroes on CNN. Uh, that fellow, that white-haired fellow on CNN, I can't remember his name, was 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 like was drooling to be talking to this young black man who was who <laughs> presented himself as a journalist, who the video of this man was closely, closely involved in destroying the window, in, destro- in he was like inches away from that girl, uh, uh, Ashley, uh, I forget her name, uh, getting shot at Point Black Range. He was right there, yelling and screaming to burn this place down, burn this place down. That, that's a known uh, BLM activist and um, Antifa activist. But all that aside, here's President Trump, one of the richest and most successful human beings alive. He's decreased his wealth by half trying to serve America. He never took a single presidential paycheck. He's president of, of the strongest army in the history of Earth. He built, he rebuilt the U.S. Army into the strongest army in the history of Earth. And this is how, this is how Mr. Trump, President of the United States, is going to organize an armed uprising (laughs) to overtake the United States with some guy in, in grease paint on his face dressed up like, like a Viking on Halloween. This, what was, what was Mr. Trump's plan? after he overthrew the United States government as a military armed uprising. That's what an insurrection is. It isn't a bunch of people out of control. It's an armed, it's, it's an attempt to take over the United States government. Who, who was going to, uh, what, was, what was President Trump going to do? Make uh, Mr. Uh, Wolfman Jack or whatever his name, the Viking guy, he was going to make him Secretary of Defense? What was, what was the plan to take over the United States government? Honestly speaking, with a couple of hundred people who was who had been known to be planned, planned after their after their constant disenfranchisement, constantly being mislabeled by the press, twenty four hours a day, being demeaned and belittled and be call, called stupid and idiotic and and uh, uh, supremacists and racists every minute of every day, and a couple of hundred of them organized for a month in advance. Uh, with their with their rage, and and this is supposed to be the new government of the United States. So the reason, again, just to conclude now, the reason why I am uh, making this uh, this podcast is to just in the middle of while Trump supporters are happy. Of course, they're happy, and the Democrats should be ashamed. They should be actually marched off a plank somewhere on some old pirate ship in Disneyland or something like that. Honestly speaking, but apart from that. These are these are lawmakers, lawmakers. These are people with the most power on earth, United States senators. And more than half of them vote to convict on incitement after hearing the most impossible contortions and, and a perfectly failed effort to do anything to come even close to incitement. And and then incitement to of all things, insurrection. What? What? Overthrow the United States government with some guy uh, putting a Trump shirt over an Antifa a vest and banging banging through a window with a football helmet that his friend snuck him when nobody when he thought he wasn't being taped, or some guy walking around with a uh, a, a wolf shawl. Uh, this and 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 you and we had. 56 Congress people voting to convict of incitement of an insurrection. I pray that Americans and, and the entire media voting to convict. 
and all of Twitter voting to convict, and all of Facebook voting to convict, and all of Google voting to convict, and 56 senators voting to convict, 55 and add McConnell. When any, any normal human being, I could walk across the street to the fruit store, and no one could find incitement, and surely no one could find insurrection. So the reason why I'm making this podcast is to beg people is to look at, look at who you are being governed by. Look at these senators, please. They're supposed to know the law, at least know the law. Look at, look at every, CNN, NBC, ABC, uh, uh, whoever they are, all these or, or, or news organizations, New York Times, Atlantic Monthly, Washington, uh, uh, Washington Post. If these are the people who are giving you your news and have convinced you that they're, and look at your elected officials and convince you that there was incitement, which there was not, to an insurrection, which is the, which is the, the most inane thing of it. I would rather watch Dumbo fly uh, than, to, than to imagine that President Trump would, this is how he's going to overthrow the United States government? By sending in a, a ragtag mix of a couple of angry, a couple of angry supporters uh, infiltrated with 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 uh, leftist radicals who who want to burn the place down or on on tape saying so, and and this is this is President Trump's plan to to overthrow the United States government. And so, if this is where you're getting your news, if these are the people who you are electing, then then. I'm sorry to say, but we have to. The I I would hope that there would start to become a little bit of disappointment, a little bit of skepticism, a little bit of depressed. These are my these are my elected officials, that they're able to con- vote to convict a person under such absurd and in, inane, and the majority of the Senate voted that, and and mainstream media breathlessly, by the just by by the. Tons of air moving that Trump is so bad. When the, when the, even to try to impeach a private citizen is already un- unconstitutional. The very final thing I want to say here is that Mitch McConnell is an arrogant, self-serving charlatan. His speech operated on the assumption that considering the possibility that there was election fraud is incitement. His whole speech was built on the claim that to imagine there was that there was fraud during the 2020 election and to say so is criminal. That's what McConnell did. I encourage everyone to go listen to that speech closely. It is perfectly eloquent, as McConnell always is, it is perfectly arrogant, and it is perfectly false, and it is perfectly self-serving. The entire thing is based on a perfectly false premise. Mr. McConnell has no way of knowing. In fact, even the Time article itself described precisely how the election was manipulated. And that was people bragging that they did a good thing. There are thousands of sworn affidavits of the violation of procedural re- uh, requisites for voting, for votes, for voting and vote counting and ballot counting. The man did our country a great disservice. He did uh, our recent president a great disservice, not that he cares, obviously. Please make yourself, if you don't, if you care to, aware of the the diseased self-interest that caused Mr. McConnell to take the Senate floor after the vote to acquit. It is. It is wrong. It was wrong in every imaginable way, and it was a shame in every imaginable way. All right. I ended up speaking a very long time, but I'm going to post this anyway. And if you've listened this far, thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again.